Well, up until this year, I always said that math was my least favorite subject. And it was kind of the only subject that really stressed me out. I felt like I was really proficient at the other subjects, and that I was intelligent and that sort of thing. I guess this probably started because students were complaining about word problems and I wanted to do something about that because I think the story behind the math is sometimes the best part. Um, so I put together a website where I post videos um, and the video is a clip of something happen happening in maybe our ordinary lives and then I'm posing a question to students to pull some of the math out of that. Um, I also included an other page on here, and this is, you know, um, I'm hoping to get other teachers involved. So I, I made it more as a contest and put prizes attached to it. Uh, so I was the winner of Ms. Prokofio's um, first uh, mathematical story quest, and it was about um, figuring out the speed of, the, of a bug on the tip of a, a windmill blade. A really good question, anybody could go at it and approach it and tackle it. And so I sort of loved that, that I got very varied students with different levels of math answering the question, which was amazing and very fun to read. It's, sometimes it's almost it's just like a big conversation about math, like lots of people are participating and like if we're learning something new there's like a lot of questions going on, it's a lot of us sort of figuring it out, not as much like just saying this is what's happening and write it down, it's like just engaging, really engaging I guess. A lot of times it comes down to your teacher and I think that Ms. Procopio is a, like a fantastic math teacher because of the style of class. And you know, if it were like a sort of a more just straight lecture based thing, then I think that would definitely be less in, less engaging and like a less effective way of teaching. And it can lead somewhere great, even as a simple question, like how many hours, you know, is the light bulb on? But that could lend to an awareness of an issue in a community that you could go on and change the world with. When you're kind of an ambitious young person and you have this goal of changing the world, it's hard to see how learning about imaginary things is really going to help you in the long run. So by bringing it back to reality and making all these mathematical concepts that kind of can seem really vague and as if they don't have a whole lot of significance, it brings them to life really and gives them more meaning. So I sort of believe that. I believe math is in everything all around us and that when we separate it to a math class, we're kind of doing a disservice to mathematics, but also to students as well and, and not allowing them to sort of explore their everyday math and those good questions that make you curious and a good learner and, and ultimately a good citizen, I think. It's also talking about like the duration of an LED, so you could link that into it somehow and see like how energy efficient you can make them use. Or, well, yeah, that's how many light bulbs you need to use for the second for part of the question. Yeah. yeah, for sure. You know, this allows me to put together two of my passions, but hopefully allow students to sort of maybe have look at math through fresh eyes. Um, it's just uh, like something that you know connects math to the to the real world and. You know, makes you sort of see a, like, yeah, like I said, a real world application of it. Because a lot of times people in class, you know, raise their hand and jokingly say, How am I ever going to use this in real life? Well, that's how. You know, like, it really shows that there's a concrete, uh, like, reason for why we're learning these things.